Hello, I'm Greg Sadler. Welcome to another one of my Sadler's Honest Reviews in which I do exactly that. I give you an unvarnished, competent review of a generally recent work in philosophy, self-help, personal development, leadership, could be all those sorts of things applied. Today we actually have a bit of a double header. I asked uh, the author, Matthew J. Venata, who I know from a number of different venues, he's quite important in the modern Stoicism movement, when his book, The Beginner's Guide to Stoicism, Tools for Emotional Resilience and Positivity, when this book came out, I asked him, hey, can you send me a copy for a review? And he not only sent me this book, but also its companion piece, the Five Minute Stoicism Journal. And the two works do in fact go together hand in hand. So I'm gonna be reviewing both of them and telling you, you know, what I think uh, of each of them. They're, they're strong points, things that I find problematic, some basic ideas, and some summary of the, the works themselves, the style and the structure. I like to begin by giving you an overview of the style and the structure and a bit of summary of the works themselves. So we're going to start out with summarizing at first. What kind of books are these? So you might guess from the five minute stoicism journal that this is indeed a journal in which there's a lot of places for you to do some writing. There are in fact a lot of exercises in here. And it's, it, this is essentially a workbook, but it's filled with more than just exercises, as we're going to talk about. This is really the, the main book that I would say this comes out of. So the Beginner's Guide to Stoicism, it is exactly that. It is a beginner's guide. It's very nuts and bolts. Um, it's done in, in such a way as to somebody could pick this up and read through it and understand quite a few things about not just Stoic doctrine and the system of Stoic philosophy, but, but how to begin applying it within their own life. So that's, that's what these things are intended to do. The style, very readable. I don't think that anybody would have trouble making their way through this. That doesn't mean that, that Vanada has dumbed it down, in fact, I think his, his writing style is, in fact, quite good, and I enjoyed reading through this book. I, I'll even say, too, I, um, I like the way he set up these exercises. We're, we're going to get to more of that when we get to the good points about the book. Um, the structure, we should talk about that. The books are divided into sections and chapters. So the beginner's guide, uh, as you would well expect, has an introduction. There's three parts to it. Part one is foundations, and there's a, you know some introductory stuff there, and then a little bit of historical material. Part two, your new emotional toolkit. That's one of the central ideas that, that Stoicism provides you with a bunch of tools that go into a toolkit. It's got two sections, thinking like a Stoic, acting like a Stoic, and then um, the much broader section, Part three, Stoicism for Life, has four chapters, cultivating positivity, practicing emotional resilience, being of service, and continuing your journey. It has a, a good index to it. Uh, there's a set of references and resources provided in the back. And what you're going to find as you go through this is that each chapter will have some, some discussions, some quotes, some reflections or focus points, uh, a lot of things that are kind of bullet pointed for you. And so it's, it's done in a way that, you know, leads you through it. Uh, there's also some exercises that you can do in this book. And then, of course, there's exercises in the Five Minute Stoicism Journal. This one is also divided into a set of, uh, not chapters, but sections. And this one is laid out according to 
the three disciplines that Epictetus distinguishes in his discourses. So usually summed up as the discipline of desire, the discipline of action, and the discipline of ascent. So the first section has discipline of desire, and then section two and three are courage and moderation associated with virtues. We'll, we'll talk about that a little bit more, why he does that in a moment. Section four leads us into the discipline of action, and then we have section five focused on the virtue of justice. Section six is the discipline of ascent, section seven, the associated virtue of wisdom, and then he brings it to a close with section eight on emotional resilience, connecting back to the chapter on that in here, and section nine on sustained happiness. And this book also includes resources and references so that a person who is beginning their study as you know, the intended audience of this is, could uh, follow up with that. So that is the, the overall, you know, sort of style structure summary part for both of these books together. Obviously, they, as companion pieces, they share an awful lot in common. What are the key ideas of the works? I'm almost tempted to say, as Seneca did in response to his interlocutor who asked him for a bunch of uh, Stoic maxims, well, I mean, the whole thing is full of maxims. Uh, you know, every page practically for this has some major Stoic idea that's being mentioned or worked out. So I, I'm only going to give you some high points. I will say this. This is something I want to place very front and center because I'm going to talk about it both in the good points and the problematic points of the work. So there is a popular way of, of approaching Stoicism in the present that is indebted to Epictetus in terms of these three disciplines. Epictetus himself did not frame the three disciplines in terms of the virtues or particular emotions or anything like that. He, he mentions the three disciplines at several points, talks about the third discipline as one that you know, people want to focus on instead of you know, working on the first two disciplines. And Epictetus doesn't actually talk about the virtues quite as much as the other Stoic authors who we have and the other authors who talk about Stoicism. That said, that plays a major role in the organization of this uh, five-minute Stoicism journal, and it also plays a major role in the discussion of, of this work, the discussions within this work. So we'll come back to that in a moment, and, and I'll talk about why it's, it's an important set of connections that are being made. Let's talk about the virtues. So as Vanata brings up, quite correctly, the Stoics thought that there were four cardinal virtues, uh, wisdom, justice, temperance, and courage. We can reframe them as he does with moderation instead of, uh, you know, and self-control instead of temperance, um, but it's all still the same stuff. And these virtues are, you might say, baskets in which we have, you know, su subordinate virtues, ways of being in the world with each other in, in relation to ourselves. And these are things that we ought to cultivate. The Stoics, in fact, thought that the virtues were the primary good. Everything else that was good is good primarily in terms of virtue. So he, he does a really good job in you know, highlighting that and explaining that. Now, understanding what the virtues are and how they fit into our lives, that is where the, the workbook stuff comes in really well. Um, what else? Stoicism is something that we, we can do in a, in a cognitive way. We can learn about it, but it's also incredibly important that we practice it and that we do things with it and that we keep track of ourselves. Again, that's why a journal is especially useful. Journaling was a Stoic practice that was used by quite a few uh, uh, you know, important people to chart out whether they were making progress or not, figure out what they needed to focus on, analyze the mistakes that they are making. So, you know, we're getting a good, a good representative sample of what Stoicism is and what it teaches in here. We're also getting a very 
short and kind of selective history of Stoicism in here, which I think can be quite useful for people to, to figure out where things fit in. Uh, another key idea with Stoicism is that what we are, are meant for as human beings is happiness or doing well or flourishing, and that this includes not you know primarily just you know being filthy rich or having constant pleasures, but developing the virtues and living a good life, a life that will ultimately be one with very few negative emotions, perhaps none if we're really, really fortunate, right? Uh, and, and we'll have some, some good emotions in there as well. And it'll be a life that flows along. One of the other things that I think is, is good, you know, both in Stoicism and in Van Natta's treatment of it, is a recognition of the importance of justice as a virtue. And the fact that the Stoics thought that we are not made to be you know, isolated individuals, withdrawing into ourself, but rather connected with other people. We're supposed to be working on improving our relationships and figuring out, you know, how not to be abused, but also how to get out there in the world and take stances against injustice. So that's, that's a very important point. Um, we can talk about that as stoicism as social. And then, you know, the other thing that I will say one more time, this notion of practices as being tools and you know putting things into your toolbox it's it's kind of a compelling metaphor epictetus seneca marcus aurelius the you know the big 3 would talk about having things ready at hand meaning practices or insights or maxims or you know uh, judgments and i think that is quite helpful to think about, you know, what are you having ready at hand, the things that actually are tools. So those are uh, a good bit of what's being focused on in both of these books. And the point of having a toolbox is not just to put it in the closet for a rainy day, it's to be using these tools all the time. And, you know, I'll, I'll put it to you this way, and this is a good way to close out this section. If you're using these books as they're intended to be, they ought to get pretty worn out. They're, they're well put together, but they should get quite a bit of use and perhaps abuse inadvertently. And that'll be the sign that somebody's actually making use of these. So I have a lot of good things to say about these books as books for beginners, but also perhaps to some degree like this, this journal useful for people who have put in a good bit of progress as well, who've been studying Stoicism for a long time. To begin with, as I mentioned before in the, the style section, these are very readable. And that's something that can, can be challenging in writing about Stoicism because the Stoics actually use their own technical vocabulary and a lot of their ideas are rather what we would call counterintuitive. They would call them paradoxical. And so being able to write about them for a popular audience in a way that, that conveys the information well and doesn't cut corners, that's actually quite a good thing. And I would say on the whole, Vanada has pulled that off. Now, he's got an incredible advantage. If you know who he is, he has had the Good Fortune podcast for a long time. He was very important in the uh, development of, of modern Stoicism and its popularization in, in the you know, recent decades. So what you've got here is, is somebody, an author, who has been thinking about and applying these things for years. I mean, it's nice, too, this is a little bit of a side note, that the book... Um, begins in the introduction talking about his, his own story and how Stoicism became useful for him. And that gets brought up again and again in the book as well. So this is somebody, to, to move on sort of to the next topic, this is somebody who has really thoroughly studied Stoicism, who has made it part of the fabric of his own life, thought, and practice, and relationships, 
and who now is providing something for the general public. So that's that's really quite good. It's a very competent and you know for a book that's done in in such little bite-sized chunks it is a pretty systematic presentation of stoic philosophy and practices so that those are some really good points another thing that i want to uh say as a as a high point you know from somebody who does a lot of work on the Stoics and with the Stoics, both in scholarly ways and, you know, in popular ways and with clients, um, I can say that, that Van Nata, what he has here is a modern treatment that is, is really, really grounded in the Stoic texts. You know, here's, here's one way to frame it. So when you're reading through it, you're like, well, this is not just a bunch of things all thrown together. The way a lot of the beginner books in Stoicism tend to be, this is a really well thought out arrangement. And only somebody who has put in the time and the work and the study would be able to pull off something that makes it look this effortless and easy. So, again, something I think is really great about it. Um, He's got some some good handling and interpretation of the disciplines. You know, a good example of this, I, I marked one, is on page 90, where he, he connects these three disciplines with um, what you're going to be doing in terms of the, the uh, notion of control and what's in your control and what's not in your control. So he's explaining a, a bit here. The discipline of desire transfers your affections from things in life to your virtue, how you walk through life. The discipline of action tells you to stop seeking a particular end goal and instead make your best move at every step. The discipline of ascent helps you to overcome misinterpretations of your circumstances so you approach life with clarity. Now, obviously, that's not all that the disciplines would be doing, but, you know, what he's got there is actually quite, quite, you know, quite good. It's, it's showing somebody, here's how these three disciplines, which seem rather abstract, actually fit in with how you're going to make your life better using Stoic philosophy. So, you know, this, this is quite excellent. I do want to say something about the uh, notion of the, the three disciplines and the virtues and connecting it with other things. So Epictetus himself, as I mentioned, does not actually make those connections. And you're not going to find the three disciplines talked about as such prior to Epictetus. As a matter of fact, Seneca does talk about three disciplines, but they're not those three disciplines. They're, they're three other things as well, which can be kind of connected, but, but it's not the same thing. So, you know, where is this ultimately coming from? It's kind of a much more modern interpretation to say, let's take the three disciplines and the four virtues and bring them together and connect them with each other in this rather schematic way. Now, what I want to say about the good points of that is that some people who work with that uh, manage to pull it off. And I think Van Nata does that. Again, because he's, he's got a really great grounding in this and has been thinking this, this stuff out for years and years and years. So that's all I'm going to say about that in the good points stuff. Uh, the last thing that I want to bring up is the, the tools in the toolbox, the practices. So this book in particular, the 5-Minute Stoicism Journal, uh, has a number of different practices in it, usually connected with a quote or passage to help you out. And, you know, some of these are similar to things that you'll find in other, you know, teach yourself stoicism or, you know, beginner's introduction and, and stuff like that. But I would say just the sheer number of high quality um, exercises to do in here, all of which are connected with Stoicism. There's nothing in here that's kind of like make work or filler. This is really quite good. And they're not only contained in here, there are exercises also contained in, in this book as well. So that's pretty impressive. And I'm going to give you one example of an exercise that I particularly like that not a lot of people talk about in their, you know, let's talk about the, you know, practical exercises or practices or spiritual practices, whatever, of Stoicism. So he's got this discussion that he calls festival. 
And he starts with a quotation from Epictetus, when you're alone, you should call this condition tranquility and freedom. Think of yourself like the gods. And when you're with many, you shouldn't call it a crowd or trouble or uneasiness, but festival and company and contentedly accept it. So, you know, Epictetus actually goes on, he says, you know, when the kids come up to you with their, their nonsense games, you know, where you're supposed to clap your hands, clap your hands with them. You're at a festival. Enjoy yourself, right? And so Vanada says... I've been at loud concerts and have had the time of my life. I've been at cafes where one conversation is slightly too, too loud and had my day ruined. Epictetus points out that we give a lot more grace to people at festivals than we do to folks on a regular day. He suggests we drop the idea of the crowd and instead make every day a festival. When the people around you begin to frustrate, you stop, take a breath, say festival. So you're reminding, yourself, there's a monomic thing there connected to insights, connected to behavior connected to emotions. He says, think to yourself that this is a festival. These people are my people. I contentedly accept it. Now that is a really nicely set up stoic practice. I could take that and dump it into one of my, my classes without changing anything where I'm introducing students to philosophy as a way of life and they could get that and, and use it right away. And so the reader is going to be able to do that as well. So these are a lot of good points to the work. I think you see where I'm going with this in terms of recommending it or not. With pretty much any work, you can, you can find something that's problematic about it. And I'm going to say that the things that in these works I found problematic are not problematic with a low, uppercase P, but a, a lowercase P. And they might be viewed even as just quibbles. So, you know, somebody else could read this and say, I'm not really bothered by that. But I, I do think that there's a, there's a few issues that uh, come up. And, and some of that has to do with my own experience in working with people who are beginners in, in Stoicism. So they fall into two main categories. One has to do, once again, with something I brought up several times, taking the three uh, you know, disciplines or topoi that, that Epictetus distinguishes and the four virtues that the Stoics talk about and meshing them into each other in a schematic way. Now, you can do that. And, and, and Vanada has, you know, showing us that you can do it quite powerfully. Uh, Pierre Addo did that as well, which I think is what gave, gave so many people the idea that they should do this. It's not non-Stoic. It's just that it's only one possible way of interpreting Stoicism. And it often gets taken by people as if it's Stoic doctrine itself, that these things are connected with each other. And the, the point, in fact, is that in the ancient Stoic text, they simply aren't. So I, I don't like giving people the impression that this is not just an interpretation rather than like sort of the party line, because beginners in philosophy will tend to begin by trying to learn whatever they can and then approaching when they go to the primary texts they kind of import all these ideas in. And so I've been in so many uh, Stoic sessions, whether it's workshops or small group meetings or working one-on-one -on -one with somebody, and they're like, okay, so this is this, and this is this, and this is this. And then you're like, well, that's not actually what the Stoics thought, and that's not what the texts say. And they're like, well, why did somebody say that? And Well, they were trying to give you a summary of it and some helpful stuff, and you took it and ran with it. And I think that's one thing that can happen with that. And, you know, my other, my other concerns about the, the work basically fall into the same thing. Um, there, there are some, some aspects to it, some things that are said where something has been left out. Um, obviously, you know, a book this small, you're not going to have everything included. So these could just be quibbles, but I am going to bring them up. So at one point, you know, the, the, he talks about... Um, a modern therapeutic practice, cognitive behavior therapy, was influenced by Stoic writings, and that's completely true. 
But cognitive behavior therapy was influenced by it because rational emotive behavior therapy developed by Albert Ellis was explicitly influenced by, by Epictetus and by Stoicism. So, you know, I think it would have been good to say something about that. Um, I, I'm not sure about this assertion that the dichotomy of control, like Von Nata says, of all the Stoic tools you will receive, the dichotomy of control is the most fundamental. I don't think that there is a single fundamental uh, practice or idea or anything for Stoicism. I think there's a number of different ones and they all kind of hang together. But, you know, again, we could say, well, that's that's my interpretation rather than uh, his. Um, the claim that Epictetus developed the discourses historically, we don't really know that that's the case. As a matter of fact, given how conservative Epictetus is in so many other ways, it's probable that he got these from somewhere else. We, we don't have them in the lectures of his teacher, Mosonius Rufus, but then again, we don't have a lot of what Rufus perhaps wrote or, or taught, and so we're, we're not really sure. And, and I should, I should um, say, Vanada doesn't make a strong claim here. He says the three disciplines seem to have been developed by Epictetus, both to inform Stoic practice and act as a structure for his school's curriculum. So that's, that's you know, good to, to talk about as well and think about. Um, there's another thing where, you know, there, there's somebody left out in, in the story, and that is uh, an important writer who we learn a lot about Stoicism from, and he's being used here in the book. For example, in the section on courage, breaking down the virtue of courage into five different uh, sub-virtues, because there's other ways of breaking it down in the Stoic literature. Endurance, confidence, high-minded cheerfulness, industriousness, that's coming from Arius Didymus, who is not being mentioned at all in the history or in the references. So, you know, there, it'd be nice to see that in there in part because that text is so helpful for other people when they want to go on. But I, I think they'd encounter it anyway. So these are, again, really minor points, and, and I don't think that they detract in any major way from the work. I, I just think that you know, when people are studying Stoicism, we do got we do have to make sure that they're getting to the to the primary textual material from these gateways. And um, you know, once they do, if they are reading things into it, hopefully they they eventually get to the point where where what they're they're reading is is less informed by what they're bringing in from the outside and more by the text itself. And then they can come back to stuff like this and say this is actually quite quite good. For people who are interested in Stoicism and are at a beginner level, and perhaps even some at a intermediary level, I would actually highly recommend both of these books. The Beginner's Guide to Stoicism, quite good. It's you know very small. You can carry it around. It's it's you know quite durable as well. Uh, I've already put it through some paces. Little pricey at twelve ninety nine a book, but I think that's 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 well within the normal range. The five minute Stoicism journal. This you know I think if you actually use it the way it's intended to, this is uh, a book that you'll get a lot of mileage out of and it'll help you develop insights. It's full of, of really great exercises. $14.99 for, for this one. So all told, you can get you know, both of these for less than, than 30 bucks, and this you know, would be a, a good course. These could, in fact, be used for uh, groups that are studying Stoicism. These could be used with, with some supplements as kind of textbooks, I think. So I think they're really quite good. For somebody who's at, you know, in the intermedi intermediary level and start, you know, really studying a lot of stuff uh, all the way to the advanced level, okay, this might not be as useful. It depends on, you know, what you want to do with it. But I think this could still be quite handy. I'm very happy that I've got a copy. So my overall um, recommendation is that you get a hold of these if you, if you don't have them already.